Today we're going to be talking about Win Memo 1 and GE Simplicity. Uh, my name is Jeremiah. I'm the Technical Support and Training Manager here at Win 911. With me today, we also have Jeremy Megan. I'll go ahead and let him introduce himself now. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, for you guys I haven't had a chance to, to talk with, I'm uh, Channel Sales Manager for GE Digital, Win 911. Uh, we look forward to providing more resources on Simplicity going forward. I think we've got some uh, really good stuff coming out here this summer that we're going to be covering today as well. So thanks again for joining us and I'll be sticking around for the questions at the end as well. Perfect. Thank you, Jeremy. All right, we'll get started here. So when now one in Simplicity, the agenda for today, we'll talk about supported versions where you're going to install Win911, integrating Win911 with Simplicity. Uh, talk about the log viewer help and how that can be of assistance to you for troubleshooting purposes, how to use that. Uh, do a quick little screen of debug logging. I'll mention the contacts utility and we'll have a demo. So uh, supported versions here, if you go to our website and you click on the documentation and system requirements, it's linked here. Uh, this is the screenshot on the bottom right of our SCADA compatibility. As uh, so you can see here, the simplicity, we support 8.2, 9.0, and 10. Um, that's for our current version right now today, which is version 4.20.5. We are coming up on releasing our Simplicity 11 support at the end of June with our next major release. Where do we install Win911? Uh, so it's pretty basic. Win91 has to be installed on your local computer running that Simplicity project. Uh, so you can see a screenshot here of the network on the client or the project. As long as the, the actual project is running on that local machine, that's where Win91 needs to be. So the integration, uh, this is just a screenshot of the Win91 workspace. And you can go to Alarming, Simplicity, the projects. And you can see here that uh, it's pretty straightforward as far as what you have to configure from our end. You put in the project name, and if you're using security, that username and password. Um, so as far as you know, the connection into Simplicity in that project, that's about it. And then we have some other things that we'll talk about, like bringing alarms into Win911, how to make those filters or points. But pretty straightforward from the connection to the project standpoint. So note about security here. So security is enabled uh, in your Simplicity side. You need to have that Simplicity username and password that has access and has the ability to acknowledge alarms. Uh, that's the account that you're going to want to use in the Win911 configuration, or else you're just going to run into permissions issues, right? So if it's an administrator or uh, some system admin user, that's what you're going to want to use. You can make one specifically for Win911. Uh, or use an existing, but just make sure it has the access to all of your alarms and access to uh, the permissions required for acknowledging those alarms. So bringing, bringing alarms into Win911, uh, so bring them in, but the data source supports two different methods. There's the filters, and what really should be called here instead of imports would just be the points, right? You'd make the points individually. So the filters is what we recommend. Uh, as it's a dynamic process. So the filters, they don't consume a lot of memory or any of the resources, uh, they're dynamic. Uh, what I mean by that is, you know, I'll show you a demo, but you can just search for a specific keyword. You know, tank one, tank two, and tank three can all be found with just the word tank and a wildcard. So if you ever add more alarm points on the simplicity side, uh, you don't have to go manually add those as a point specifically in Win911. It would dynamically catch anything in your filter that matches that criteria you've set up. Uh, so we do have a video already posted on our website for the Simplicity Alarm Filter and Import. Um, if you just go to our website, win911.com, go to the resources and how-to videos, you'll see that there. So. Uh, I'll show you a quick demo on what I did for my system, but if you want an in-depth video on that, that's already out there. 
So a little bit more about the integration and uh, the direct connect into that alarm viewer API for simplicity. So you can filter uh, on the alarm point ID, the class name, resource ID, or the class order. And you know, again, you can see here in the screenshot, you use wildcards, and uh, you can use you know a specific keyword, and then the wildcard to catch you know anything that matches that keyword, anything after it. Um, and you can make these real dynamic and then just work for you for how you have your alarm set up on the simplicity side. So, you know, the advantages here is you don't have to manually go in and add a point one by one and set up your, your configuration, your criteria for that alarm. Um, this, you know, you keep all the alarms maintained in the SCADA and, uh, you know, we can acknowledge it easily. That's seamless and it's going to make things a lot easier long term. And it also uses less resources, so that's always good. So I just wanted to go over a, a quick note that is very important about the filtering. You can see here with the big anded together and ORed together. So when you're making these filters, uh, the big headline option, right, the, the top level of you know specific point IDs, or specific class names or specific resource IDs, when you select to specify those, those are anded together, meaning it must match your point ID and match your class name and match your resource ID. And then the interior ones of those, those filters on the inside are gonna be ORed together. So you could have specific alarm point ID of tank or level, right with an or and specific class name of you know a or b whatever you're doing there but those are ORed together on the filters and it together for the main criteria so that's just something to be aware of if your filters aren't working right all right so quick look at our log viewer um and, and i wanted to add this to uh, probably a lot of our webinars moving forward just because there's a lot of customers that i deal with and support that might not uh know all of the features and capabilities and how to use the log viewer so if you haven't used it or, or you don't know everything about it um, log viewer is basically our window into what's going on with the alarms that we're getting from the SCADA what's happening with the processing of those alarms so uh, to open it up you just click on your window start button you type log viewer uh, if your machine doesn't have indexing or doesn't search well um, you can just go to our install directory which is the C program files, x86, win them one software, enterprise, dispatcher, and then there's the log viewer executable. So how can a log viewer help? Check the status of alarms, see that it's active or inactive, acknowledged, unacknowledged. You can acknowledge them from the log viewer directly. You can verify which strategy and tactic the alarm is called. Uh, and you can see if a notification was sent to the correct person successfully or if that failed. And we'll get into that here in the demo in just a little bit. Quick note here about that alarming sequence, right? So you have your filters that you, you want to bring alarms in. And you set those filters, as you can see in the screenshot on the left side there, to a strategy. That strategy is triggered as soon as that alarm filter criteria is matched. The strategy is the set of those rules in the middle. You see initial event starts a tactic. Any alarm state change is going to re-notify. If you want that option turned on, you can also turn it off. Uh, alarm becomes acknowledged, stops the strategy, right? So that's your set of rules is a strategy. And the initial event start tactic, that's your actual callout list. It utilizes that tactic you've created to send out the emails, voice calls, SMS, the mobile app notifications, whatever you've decided to add as your, your contacts that are getting these notifications. So alarms, trigger your strategies, utilize your tactics, which is your call out list. All right, so this is a view into the log viewer. Um, you can see here that we have alarms in here. This is just a quick example. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys a little bit more about this in the demo, but you can see quite a bit of information already, right? So you have the time they came in, the state that they're in, whether they're active or inactive. You have the alarm point, uh, the condition, the source where it came from. So this one is an example of iFix alarm coming in. 
Uh, and then one of the most important things here is the strategy column. What strategy did it hit? All right, so if you're using filters and uh, you, you try to trigger an alarm and it's not going to the right people in your, in your tactic, in your call out lists, come here and see what strategy it actually hit. That'll help you actually fine tune and, and tweak your filter criteria to get them going to the right one. Um, you can also see on the very top left here that auto update is checked, which is just the live view into everything as an auto update. If you deselect that, then you'll be able to search for the date time on the right side that is currently grayed out in this screenshot. Um, you can also acknowledge the alarms from this page. Uh, and you can double click into the alarm to get even more information, which is what we're going to go into now. You pretend like you double click it and you get this view. So you can see we're into this uh, palletizer wrapper uh, light CTN1 alarm. And you can see it's dispatching email to Keith and it was successful. You can see who was notified, when or if it was acknowledged, which strategy it was used, or it's used by, and which tactic uh, was called out by that strategy as well as any state changes. So pretty much all the information you need is gonna be here in the log viewer for troubleshooting and looking at what happened with that path from alarm to notification. All right, and I wanted to bring up uh, the debug mode. We have a KB article on this already. It's out on our website. If you go to our uh, winnow1.com, go to support and solutions or knowledge base, it's going to be a, a searchable uh, database of, of KB articles for you. And you can just type in the word debug. Um, but you can see here in the screenshot, um, this is an example just using email. And you can do this for any module that you want, right? If you're, if you're troubleshooting simplicity, you would do this for simplicity runtime, uh, voice, email, SMS, mobile, anything you're doing. You'd go to the runtime config file, which is in our installation path of you know, C program files, Win911, all the way through to this email module in this example. You'd open up the config file with Notepad. Uh, you change the logging flags value from default to debug. And then you just save those changes and restart that particular one runtime service. So pretty straightforward, but that essentially is going to be turning on the maximum logging level, which is all logged to the event viewer. Uh, and I will show you this as well in the uh, demo coming up. All right, and I wanted to bring up contact utility because uh, again, a lot of people don't know about it still. We released this last year, and so I wanna keep hitting on the uh, functionality, the usability of this. Um, so what is the contact utility? Well, a lot of people kept requesting from us to make something that you could change the order of the people in your tactic or change their schedules uh, for when they're on or off call without having to go all the way into the workspace, you know, get, give an operator full permissions in there. That they, might, they might mess something up or they just don't know how to use it or you just don't want them to have access to everything else in the workspace. That's what the contact utility is for. You just run a separate executable. It connects straight into your dispatcher settings. You can see here it has your connections or, or your contacts. Uh, it has the schedules that you can change. You can change the order, take people on call or off call whatever you need to do. So it's a nice light application that just gives you this information and not the rest of uh, all the settings from the workspace. All right, on to the demo. So I'm going to switch over to my VM real quick. And this is, um, this is a full demo that I just set up with uh, Simplicity, just absolutely bare bones. Didn't even exist on my machine yesterday installed Simplicity, set up a demo, and uh, was going to run through everything that, that I've done. And uh, hopefully it'll help you guys see how it works in practice and practical application here and uh, answer a lot of questions as well. So um, first thing is the actual Simplicity. And you know, if you guys are used to Simplicity and you guys are pros at this and you've been using it, you probably have a thousand better ways to do this than I do. <laughs> I was just uh, kind of fumbling around with the Simplicity software, trying to figure it out on my own, and uh, got it figured out for my purposes and what I needed. But if you have a better way to do all this, so be it. Uh, this is this is just what I could find out with a demo. So 
you can see here my project is running uh, and to open this up i just opened up something called workbench which is in the simplicity folder after installation uh, called workbench and i found that this gives me the information that i needed which is the ability to open a project uh, and, and right now you can see this is a running project i only have the option to stop it is currently running and it was just called the simp demo um, so in here, you know, the name is simp demo and it's a .gef file. Uh, this simp demo is exactly the same name that you're going to use for the Win911 settings. So your project name here. Go into edit. And my VM is going to be super slow, I apologize, but uh, simplicity is kind of a beast with the resources I found out. Uh, if, you, if you don't have anything in there, it tells you, please enter the Simplicity project name, right? And I, I actually didn't know what that was going to be, so I just kind of guessed and said, well, if this is what the file is called, let's try that. And sure enough, Simp Demo was exactly what it wanted. And then you have the username or password. Um, so this also was something that uh, I had to struggle with on the Simplicity side, but you can go to Security go to users and then there's a system manager role id some operators and some users in here so all i did was give this um, username jeremiah to the user id of administrator set the password and that's what i'm using here is that administrator username and my password that i set up manually in there uh, but this is where you're going to want to make sure that this user that you guys already have set up or one that you're going to set up has the permissions to be able to to act the alarms uh, to see everything it needs to right um, so i'm using the administrator here and then by default this is just loaded up in here with a default description of a health alarm just basically saying that the connection to the project was lost if the simplicity, if the simplicity project was stopped the connection should automatically recover upon restart uh, this you can change you can write whatever in here Yeah, and this is just going to be an alarm that when we lose the connection to Simplicity, it's going to pop up in your in your uh, log viewer and, and alert based on the strategy that you select right here. But I have mine going to do not notify because I don't need to be notified about it. You guys can set that up to go to whatever strategy that you've already created. Notify whoever you want. Uh, so you'll save that. And so as far as you know, the, the bare bones basic connection, that's it. Now we are essentially connected to SIMP demo as long as the username and password was correct. Um, I brought up the debug logging so that I can show you over here if we were to go into C program files x86, Win911 software, enterprise, and simplicity. You have the runtime executable, which is for the service running, and this is the config file. And you just right click, go into edit, or open with notepad if you don't have it already set up to do that like I do. And then this field here, logging flags, value equals debug instead of default. And then you'd save that, close it, open your services, and restart that runtime. So I already have it in debug because I've been troubleshooting with this all morning here. And so you can see that when you go into the event viewer logs, and this is what it looks like when you just open Event Viewer. You expand the application and service logs, and there's our Win911 stuff right there. Um, and you can see my Simplicity runtime is logging a whole bunch. That right there tells you already good. This would come up with uh, what I had previously with a bunch of authentication issues and errors and, and couldn't connect. Um, so again, real quick, easy way to make sure you're actually connected to the, the project that you wanted to be connected to and that your credentials are working. It tells you connected to projects and demo. All right, so then the next step is, well, what alarms do we want to see, right? What do you what, what do you want to bring into WinMen1 to start alerting on and sending notifications out on? Uh, so I want to just quickly go over a, a couple of the options that we talked about, uh, but give you this practical application here where you can go to points and you can manually define a point like I have here. So I just manually put this in based on what uh, the alarm points over in my project were, which is here. Right, so these are the points. You guys have all your own ones that you that you're looking for already that you've configured. 
Um, this one's called Tank 2. So if you were to add a new one, you can see you give it a name. This is just user defined. Uh, you can use the description that Simplicity provides, or you can specify your own text. The project is just a drop down to go back to your simp demo or whatever yours is called. And then the actual point ID, you can see the watermark in the background here, specify the point ID as it appears in Simplicity. So you would just type that in. And then the strategy settings for which strategy you want it to go to. All right. So all I did was type in tank two, go into my simp demo to my basic strategy. Super easy. Same thing with the tank underscore level. That is exactly how it shows up in here. So that's exactly what I did on the uh, win number one side. And I have two points, right? So essentially right now, if this is all you did was just add a few points, uh, those are the only alarms that you're going to be seeing in Win911, right? Uh, and so you can specify conditions uh, and, and you can edit this over here if you want to. And you can do it all this way. You can, if you only have you know, a couple dozen points, go ahead and just add them manually. However, if you have enough points to make this a, a pain, you don't want to go through this manually. That's where we want to recommend going back to the project and then there's a filter criteria here, right? Uh, so what I did is again, in points, I only have tank two and tank level, right? And a filter that I've said wild card for the ID, and I can just go through this from scratch if you like. All I did was click on specific ID, wild card, star, tank, star, going to my strategy. So this is that dynamic option that we were talking about, right? So if we go back to this project, we have tank one, tank two, tank three, and I would have to go add each one of those individually as points, or I can just do this. I'm just gonna grab everything with the point ID of the word tank in there. And so in practice here, what they should do is allow me to turn on an alarm in simplicity that is not one of these two, and we should see it. So this is the, uh, the alarm viewer. Um, Again, because I am brand new to this, uh, I, uh, I was gonna show you guys exactly what I did to bring all this stuff up and maybe it'll help you too. Maybe you're already a pro at this, but just bear with me. So inside this uh, Simplicity Workbench, under this runtime, there's Alarm Viewer and I just double clicked that. And then you can log in. And that login was just the same administrator account that I used in Win911 as well. And so we don't have any alarms at all right now. Um, and so what I did was went back to the points and you can right click and open up this point control panel. Again, you guys probably have a better way to do this, but this is what I found. And the point control panel, you can bring up the points and double click it and it'll tell you what the value is gonna be to make this go into alarm, high, low, warning, and actual alarm. So uh, we're gonna pop open the log viewer over here. We don't have anything active. We're gonna pop open the alarm uh, viewer for simplicity, nothing active. And this guy wants to be at 100 for a high alarm or 90 for a warning. So then I can just set this value to 100 and click apply or okay. And you can see here, we already got it. If I refresh here, which doesn't happen live, I think there is an ActiveX version that does, but um, alarm is in simplicity, alarm is in Win911. Here's our log viewer demo, right? You can see it came in as alarm point take two, condition is too full, came in from simplicity, my simp demo, went to my basic strategy. Who is it going to notify? Double click it. Dispatching to Jeremiah Mobile, success. There you go. Uh, if it's been acknowledged, you'll see that here. The strategy that it hit, it hit my basic strategy that's calling out start tactic, basic tactic. This is what the tactic is calling out. Jeremiah Mobile and Sully, who is not on schedule. So you can get some troubleshooting there as well. 
Uh, so super helpful to see everything. And then, you know, from here, you can just acknowledge it. And now that that's acknowledged here, we should refresh and see it's acknowledged here, which it is. And that goes away because we have our stop condition for my um, strategy to be when it's acknowledged, stop the strategy. And then we can take this value, put it back to something that's not an alarm, refresh this, and it's not there, right? So uh, those two points that I've created right here, tank level and tank two, I wonder if we were to do this with tank three, if my filter is going to work, right? So this is where you're going to use those filters. We go into tank three. It needs to be at a value of 90 for alarm. So I'll set that. And we'll see if this works for the filter I created. And we refresh here. Tank three is an alarm. And you can see here, alarm point now shows filter dot zero dot tank three. So if you had 100 tanks that you're looking at, you wouldn't have to add 100 points. You can just go into the filter, point ID, wildcard tank, and you can see it pulled it in, and we got it. So super helpful there. Um, and you can uh, make these as, as complex as you want or as simple as you want. Um, again, try to think about dynamically how you'd have this grow over time with your system. Uh, you can even, you know, add your own keyword to all of the ones that you want to have sent to Win911 and just search for that one keyword. Maybe it's Win91 added to it. Um, but again, you can get pretty specific in here. And all of these main header criteria that you can turn on and off, these are anded together. So if I was to do tank and level, this would have to match the ID point of tank and match the class name of level for it to actually work. Um, also, you can just do all points, all classes, all resources, all class orders, and that's all alarms in general goes to the strategy and save that. That's everything. A lot of good troubleshooting that way um, by making more than one of these filters. And these are going to filter kind of like firewall rules filter. The first one that they hit and match, they're going to go to, right? So all alarms would be your catch-all. If you added another one, uh, you can go ahead. Oh, sorry. You can go ahead and make this one be your tank. Anything. Set that to strategy and save. And now you'd have specific point ID for tank going here, and then all alarms. You can set this to a, a do not notify or or any other strategy that you want to test with. And if you turn the alarm on and in the log viewer, you see it's getting hit by this strategy and going to do not notify, you know it didn't match your filter criteria for what you were looking for up here. So those go down the list and the first one and that it matches, it goes to and it will not hit all of them. It's just like firewall rules. So cool. All right. So that about does it for here. Uh, went through filters, points, the project connection, debug logging, the log viewer. And now we're going to go ahead and uh, open it up to what we're bringing in the future. So what we're working on right now, for Simplicity 11 support, that is coming at the end of June. That's our next major release coming out. Uh, we added some reconnect logic to the source runtime so that it's forgiving of project restarts. Um, right now, what I just found out in my testing is anytime you start uh, the project and then stop it or make any changes and, and match that configuration over to the runtime, you have to restart our service or else it says that the project was deleted. So it's going to have some better reconnect logic. Um, we've added some backend server calls to keep the runtime going across configuration changes. Uh, the project and the point names are no longer case sensitive, so it's just automatically converted to uh, uppercase. Uh, and now points can be used for reporting. So they did some some good building of uh, the points where you can do imports, kind of like iFix blocks, if you're familiar with those, where you can use them for reporting values, and you can do a dynamic import of everything. So that's going to be good things coming for our next update with Simplicity.
We're also working on a completely brand new redesigned WinM1 product in general. So uh, if you're familiar with the old V7 and how much was changed going to this new software that I just showed you, it's, it's one of those levels of uh, new desktop UI redesign. So we're getting away from the Internet Explorer, replacing Silverlight user interface uh, with the WPF desktop application. So simplifying that, removing the IIS dependency, again, that's being a web page, uh, decreased resource usage. So that's exciting. Uh, we also are working on redundancy, which is going to be automatic failover to the backup WinMemo machine, and then syncing that configuration of the database across. So right now, you make a change on your active, you have to go manually make that change in the configuration on your standby as well, or you have to do like a monthly or quarterly backup and restore procedure, whatever you guys are choosing to do of your SQL database settings. Uh, we're going to be working on that, syncing that across both machines if you change it on the active one. Uh, also in the works is OPC UA. So right now we only support OPC DA, but we're working on the UA alarms and conditions. And we'll have some resources here that are included. 